Hello everyone and welcome to Lost in the Real. Today I'm going to be covering Peacock's new limited series Angeline, an unauthorized look into the life of the iconic Billboard celebrity. Does this new series bring further insight to the enigmatic star? Let's talk about it. Angeline is created by Nancy Oliver and stars Emmy Rossum, Alex Perkovsky, Hamish Linklater, Michael Angreno, Lucas Gage, and Martin Freeman. A series about fame, identity, survival, billboards, corvettes, lingerie, men, women, women teasing men, men obsessed with women, West Hollywood, crystals, UFOs, and most importantly of all, the self-proclaimed Rorschach test in pink, glow-in-the-dark, queen of the universe, Angeline. Tackling a subject like the enigmatic Angeline was certainly no easy task. The celebrity who rose to fame by posting herself up on billboards in and around Los Angeles in the 80s and 90s kept herself the topic of water cooler conversation because she shrouded herself in mystery. It wasn't until the Hollywood Reporter expose on her came out in 2017 that light was finally shed on the starlet's dark past and people People finally knew her real name. The article read, Way before Paris Hilton and Kim Kardashian, the enigmatic blonde bombshell was famous for being famous. But unlike those two tabloid-obsessed reality show stars, Angeline reveled in being secretive and never wanted the world to know who she really was. So, how do you make a show that dives deep into a star's past life and psyche, but also stay respectful to them and their public persona? Peacock's five-episode limited series Angeline, in which the titular star was gifted $1 million and an executive producer credit, miraculously mostly gets this formula right, though you will still be left feeling like you are on the outside looking in. I have been eagerly awaiting to see what Phantom of the Opera and Shameless star Emmy Rossum, who created one of my favorite television characters of all time in Fiona Gallagher, would do next in her career. And she does not disappoint as Angeline. The actress completely disappears into the role, and not just because of the airy high-pitched voice or the prosthetic makeup and fake boobs. Rossum captures the heart and soul of this character in a way that I don't think any other performer could. You can feel the love and adoration that the actress has for Angeline throughout the entire series. What is even more impressive is that Rossum plays her in different stages of her life, retaining the same aura throughout, but also evolving from the slight naivety and optimism of her younger years to the more self-aware, opportunistic, and jaded Angeline of present day. It's a tough tightrope act that Rossum is attempting, trying to balance the camp and ridiculousness, whilst also injecting real substance to this character, and she nails it. The show itself is also a tightrope act, trying to be so many things at once. And although it tries its damnedest, I don't think it sticks the landing like Rossum is able to. Angeline the series is unfocused and all over the place, throwing in so many time jumps that it might make your head spin. The only saving grace here is that each episode almost acts as a standalone story of one of the pivotal moments in our protagonist's life. From her rock and roll days with an ex-lover, to her rise as a billboard star, to the days of fame and fortune and running her own brand, then to the later years of a documentarian trying to make a film about her life, and finally to the last episode when the THR article comes out and we get a glimpse into her past. If you look at it like that, then the show does have some kind of framework. But while you're watching, it can feel like a bit of a hot mess. This also has to do with the fact that the showrunners are trying to pull off an array of different storytelling techniques 
with the mockumentary style at the forefront. It also utilizes multiple unreliable narrators to throw the audience off of what is actually truth and what is fiction. These battling perspectives add a lot of humor to the series, as we see in real time these stories contradicting each other with outrageous results. There's also a fantasy element thrown in to add to the otherworldly essence of the star. So even though these elements are successful on their own, I can't say they were woven together in the most cohesive of ways. There is a lot to like about Angeline, and I think that the series does prove to be engrossing for most of its runtime, but it wasn't until the fifth episode that I actually loved any of it. In the finale, the series finally comes full circle, fully embracing its fantasy and meta elements, and also trying to actually get to the root of who this star is, what led her to transform into this persona, and why people have been fascinated by her for all of these years. This episode is what ultimately sealed the deal for me and made this a recommendable series which I still have a hard time doing completely because I do think it is extremely niche and only people intrigued by the power of celebrity will probably appreciate it. But even if this show is not able to fully grasp every facet of Angeline, and let's be honest, that would be impossible, just being able to be along for the ride with her is reason enough to tune in. So I will be giving Angeline three pink Corvettes out of five. Peacock's new bio series is a bit of a conundrum, just like its true life subject. The show never fully allows you in and can feel like it's all over the place trying to be way too many things at once. But Angeline is bolstered by an incredible transformative performance by Emmy Rossum and a masterful finale that gives weight to everything that came before it. So by the skin of its teeth, Angeline passes with flying colors mostly pink. Thank you so much for watching Lost in the Real and my review for Angeline. What are your thoughts on this limited series? Were you fascinated by this larger than life celebrity or could you care less? Sound off in the comment section down below. And until next time my friends, take care.